Shalom. All praises, glories, and honors to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Bacha, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone of Tobit and Truth, as well as men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom are you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners that have the appearance of the other heathen nations, but are Israelites according to the seed line of your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you, I say Shalom and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Ratazah. This lesson is edifying and informative to the elect. Uh, as you brothers and a few sisters can see on the screen, what would happen if trucks stopped? What would happen if trucks stopped? We understand that trucks which are driven by truckers here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad in countries that are heavily populated are likened unto the blood that flows throughout the country to supply life to its heart, which is its government, which are the ones responsible for the conduction of trade between their respective countries and others. But well, what happens once truckers begin to get laid off or are no longer able to deliver essential resources such as food, especially food, to our local grocery stores or a local supermarket? Hmm? What happens? Well, let's find out. 24 hours. Now keep in mind, food in a supermarket or in a store, even in a 99 cent store, only has a lasting period of three days. 24 hours if trucks stopped. Delivery of medical supplies to the affected area will cease. Hospitals will run out of basic supplies. Service stations will begin to run out of fuel. Manufacturers using just-in-time manufacturing will develop component shortages. U.S. mail Another package delivery will cease within one day. Food shortages will begin to develop. And what is that? That is called a famine. And as El Apostle Gabor always emphasizes on the word famine in the Italian, it is fame, which means hunger. And there will be a hunger in America especially in America, which is the Babylon the Great, and abroad as well, where Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians are scattered. There will be a hunger, a hunger, not only of bread, but most importantly, a hunger of the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, a thirst for drinking spiritual waters that will quench your drying souls during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's referring to you two-thirds of the nation of Israel that mock, that scoff, 
at the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, which are spoken by way of his prophets, whom today are the apostles and the elders of great Milson are down to men of like mind. Food shortages will begin to develop. And once food shortages begin to develop, we will begin to see people going to our local convenience stores, our local supermarkets, butcher shops, and buying meats and dairy products and fruits in large quantities. You're going to see a lot of Israelites buying so-called bug, uh, bug out uh, 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 supplies to last them for a lengthy period of time but that will all be in vain because once these devils come down having great wrath because they know that they had but a short time and as madmen spare none upon the nation of Israel they're going to break into your homes into your hideouts search it all out where you are hoarding all your food, all your rations, all your supplies, your medicines, and they're going to take it all and then kill you. And that's written in the book of Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, which we will get as well, Lord is willing. But once food shortages begin to develop, these things happen. Automobile, automobile fuel availability and delivery will dwindle. So we will begin to see a shortage in fuel, a shortage in deliveries, leading to skyrocketing prices and long lines at gas pumps, as we had seen in various countries, such as in Venezuela, and where there were lines upon lines for miles of people, and even at banks waiting to collect gas at gas pumps or at a gas shop or collect fuel or to collect their money. And even in Hong Kong. And let's not forget the Great Depression where people were scattering like roach when light hits them to get their money. Day two, two, three, or two or three days after. Food shortages will escalate, especially in the face of hoarding and consumer panic. And when that happens, we will see this. This is the book of Second Nessus, chapter 6, verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. Now the word sow means to scatter. Or what is usually scattered? Seed. Okay? And all these stores that have been jam-packed, that have been sown with food supplies, medicinal supplies, will appear on its own. In other words, it's going to be found empty. Well, let's get a, a brief picture of a empty supermarket shelf. As you can see, this empty supermarket shelf, which was once sown, has appeared unsown over the process of time. Why? Because there is a shortage of food. There is a famine. Just using this as an example. And this is what's going to happen. All your shelves that you're used to seeing full every day, every weekend, is going to appear like this very soon. Because thus saith the Lord Yahweh through Son Yahweh Shai, suddenly and suddenly shall the sown places appear on sown. You're not going to be able to go to the store and 
buy things instantly as you do as I speak. Because there will be a famine. There will be a hunger. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And that is what will happen when shit hits the fan. When Jacob's trouble is greatly, greatly, greatly increased. Especially over here in America, Babylon the Great, and throughout the four winds of the planet Earth. Where Israel is scattered. Now let's go back to the picture source. And so now we understand why food shortages will escalate, especially in the face of hoarding and consuming panic, because the full storehouses and the full shelves of these different sewn stores will appear empty not before long. Supplies of essentials, such as bottled water. Oh, and that's another big one. There's no water. You know, you know people go crazy over that, man. That's, that's a basic necessity of life. You have Jake, Jake that have been that, that have been suffering, and I've been experiencing Jacob's trouble in Venezuela, drinking muddied water, contaminated water, unclean water, powdered milk. All right, you see, you see you, you, your sanitary products you, that's going to be lacking as well. All the milk that you that, that you could buy for your baby, you won't be able to buy all that now. And canned meat at major retailers will disappear. And all these things are gonna disappear. And once they do, over. A great process of time after some time and all <clears throat> the hoarded up food and waters and supplies are wanting people are gonna start killing horses as they have been doing in Venezuela they're gonna start eating out of the garbage cans because it's going to be a great hunger. It's going to be a great famine, man. Lack of bread. And then eventually, they're going to start committing cannibalism. They're going to start boiling their babies. Boiling their dogs and their cats. They're animals, man. Yeah. It's going to be that bad. And when we look back at the siege of Jerusalem during the time of 70 AD, when... Vespasian's son, Titus, and his other son, Domitian, had seized Jerusalem. And they were sieging Jerusalem. You had Jake were eating their babies, their slippers, meaning their footwear, their belts, their, bu their buckles, a, a donkey's head. All that going on, man. Masada, all that going on. And that's how bad it's gonna be. But not just but not but not like that, but worse. It says supplies of essentials such as bottled water, powdered milk, and canned meat at major retailers will disappear. I gave me just read that. All the sown places shall appear unsown, and the full storehouses shall be found empty. ATMs will run out of cash, and banks will be unable to process transactions. And at that time, cash will become obsolete. And now let's prove that. Because, see, when there's hunger, people won't, worry, people won't really care about money like that, man. When there's, a, when, there's, when there's a hunger, when there's a scarcity of food, of victuals. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19, they shall cast their silver in the streets. Now remember, prices are going to skyrocket too. So there's going to be an inflation, in other words. 
They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord Yahweh. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, meaning their minds, and their little and their literal bowels as well, because your gold won't be able to save you. Eating a piece of paper, a federal extrinsic note will not be able to save you people, man, two thirds of you. Because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Garbage will start piling up in urban and suburban areas. Service stations will completely run out of fuel. Container ships will sit idle in ports and rail transport will be disrupted, eventually coming to a standstill. And as I read all this, I can envision it, man, with my, with my mind's eye. Because I see that all of this will soon happen, man, over here in America, Babylon the Great. And where you Israelites are resting comfortably, comfortably, man. The first week. Now, mind you, this is only three days after everything had initially began. When trucks stopped. It shows you truckers are very, very essential to a nation's growth, man. And as I made comparison earlier, and really, this reference, that comparison reference was, uh, I'd taken that from El Apostle Ramla because he was the one that had first made, you know, that reference in one of his daily edification lessons, man, a while back, a few months ago. Because truckers are indeed likened unto... <laughs> You know, the blood flow, you know, the, the cells that flow, you know, throughout a nation. The road represents all the different arteries, you know, that the blood flows through. You know, try to diff to, to the different organs of, of the body. <laughs> now, it's, it's the first week. Autom automobile travel will cease due to the lack of fuel. You won't be able to use your car. You won't be able to use your lamps. You won't be able to sit in your house nice and warm because it's not going to be enough fuel to heat heat up the house, keep things warm. It's going to be cold. That's why the Lord said to pray not that your fly be in the winter because a lot of you that don't know how to light a fire, <laughs> guess what? You're going to be asked out. But... To the elect of the nation of Israel, the Lord will take care of us, man. The Lord's only of the elect. I am of the elect. Those of you brothers out there that tune into the lessons. The Lord is going to take care of us, man. <laughs> you know? And the light of fire is, 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 is something basic. Remember our forefather, Elijah, that the Lord had sent ravens. to feed him with bread. And he had allowed him to drink from a brook. And that lasted him for a long, long time, man. So the Lord take cares of take cares of his of his elect. Second week, clean water supply will begin to run dry. It's gonna be a drought. The fourth week, the nation's clean water supply will be exhausted. And that's what's gonna happen. That's what will happen. So all you people out there that are at ease right now, this is that that's what's coming. All that that I just read, all that is is coming, man. So keep 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 messing around, man, and, and the Lord is gonna show you just how scary, just how fearful He is, man. See all this. All that. Now let's look at an empty storehouse. Let me show you what an empty storehouse looks like. See that? 
That's what empty storehouse looks like. All your businesses are going to be out of commission. All that. Empty storehouses. And this is what a famine, this is what a, this is what drought. See that? That's that's what a drought looks like, man. And look at all that famine. So it's going to be bad out here, man. And these pictures are just examples that I'm using to show you people out there, man. See that? Look at that shit, man. Again, these are just examples of it, of images that I'm using. So it's gonna be bad out here. So let's conclude with the book of. Second Ezra, the Spirit of me to go to Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. Second Ezra chapter nine, verse nine. Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which have now abused my ways, and that's what's going to happen to two thirds of the nation of Israel, as well as you other heathen nations. But especially, this is applying to Israel. Two thirds of you will be in a pitiful case. So much so that you're going to be calling on the name of these different deities that you worship in your different religions. And for you Christians out there, you're going to be calling on the name of, oh, Jesus, sweet Jesus, help me. But don't you know that that's not the true name of the Heavenly Father's Son? This true and only be, and it's, this true and only name is Yahweh Shai. That's the name you're supposed to be calling on, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because those other names ain't going to save you, man. Then shall they be in a pitiful case which have now abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. <laughs> because right now you have the liberty to do good to the best of your abilities. But you refuse to. You refuse to take heed unto the reproofs, the admonishments, the warnings of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai. That the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, speaks through His prophets, whom today are the apostles and the elders of great most and on down to men of like mind, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great and abroad. You shall be, you will be in a pitiful case during the time of Jacob's trouble, during the time to come. Because you have abused the ways of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Son, Yahweh, Shai. You have willingly and, this, and, 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 and despisingly cast the ways of the Lord behind your backs. Therefore, you shall dwell in torment, man. You, 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 your your, your uh, flesh is going to hug your rib cages. You won't be able to feed your, your, your kids let alone yourselves, and, and you will be wanting of victuals. You will be in a pitiful case, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Yeah, you, you're receiving all the benefits now, you're receiving all the goodies now, you're living in pleasure, you, and you have received your consolation. And have not known me, and you have not known the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Thus, and Yahweh Shah. You have not even once consider the fact that you didn't, that you truly didn't, but you believe that you did, but that's that strong delusion. And you have not known the heavenly for you have not truly known the heavenly for the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, because to know the heavenly for the Yahweh and the Son Yahweh Shai, that begins with the fear of the of the heavenly for the Yahweh. Which the fear of the heavenly father Yahweh pursuing through the book of Proverbs chapter one verse seven is the beginning of knowledge. And in the book of not Proverbs chapter nine verse ten is the beginning of wisdom. 
Because once you acquire the fear of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, you will then acquire the knowledge of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, and acts and the things that the Lord have done to our generations upon generations. And then you will then acquire the wisdom to not go against the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai. You will not go against His laws, statutes, and commandments. But rather, you will consider them and apply them to your daily lives as best as you possibly can. Otherwise, the law will destroy you. Verse 11, And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. And right now, they loathe, they despise, they hate, they avoid the laws of Yahweh through Son Yahweh Shai in their liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, as, as it is right now, as I speak, understood not, but despised it. And that's what they are showing. They sh they're showing that they despise the ways of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Son, Yahweh Shai, by casting them away despitefully and abusing them. Therefore, they shall dwell in torment, in, in torment, for they will be in pitiful cases, man. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, uh, chapter eight, verse fifty-six. For when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High, and really they despised the Lord Yahweh through Son Yahweh Shai. Though true scorn of His law and forsake His ways. And that's why they're going to die, man. That's why they're going to be put in a pitiful, pitiful case. And perish, 2nd chapter 7, verse 24. There be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, that is said before them. For Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, had given straight commandments to such as came. This is what you had to, this is what you have to do. Do this, do that, so you could avoid this. Avoid that, but no. Being rebellious, which rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, has costed you your lives, man. For Yahweh, Bashim Yahusha, had given them straight, had given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. And the Lord gave us the laws, statutes, and commandments by way of our forefather Moses. And the Lord specifically and strictly told us that pursuant to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, if we follow his ways, in short words, we'll be fine. But if not, all the curses will, will befall us. And we see that happening today, even as I speak. Now you can read the rest of it. So let's go back and finish off in the book of Second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 11. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet places of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. Verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. And that's what's going to happen. Two thirds of the nation of Israel will know the wrath of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, very soon in the times to come when the Lord will unleash four kinds upon them, pursuant to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15 the sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. Okay? You're going to be thrown in prisons, in concentration camps. And you're going to be in pitiful cases, man. Look at this shit. That's a pitiful case. And those are Hamites, by the way. So, that concludes the lesson. I hope it was a I pray it was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel and until the next Lord's willing, shallow on. Yahweh Shimiao Shabra Katam to the elect.